There we go. All righty. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Motivations Podcast with me, Coach Mona. I am super excited today. On this episode, we have a special guest, Mrs. Lencia L. Marshall. She's here to share with us about her new uh, her new published work, her new book, Glad and Grace, a 21-day guide for the strong friends. So I'm excited to have her on. Hey, Miss Lencia. Hey, Miss Mona. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you. Yes. Yeah, so tell us first of all about about yourself, and then tell us about your new book. So about me. So I am an international empowerment speaker, and my main focus is making sure that. Um, a woman's internal beauty matches the external, outside the external, external, the external beauty. Um, we put on makeup, we look real good, and on the outside, everyone thinks we have it all together. But on the inside, we're dying. You know, mm. we're not taking care of ourselves. So it's important to make sure that on the inside, we're looking, and what people see on the outside, that's what we're actually feeling on the inside. So. Um, oh, that's my quest in life. <laughs> that's my purpose in life. Um, and this, this book, Grind and Grace, yes, yes, yes. Fresh off the press, right? Fresh off the press. Um, is basically, it's a purpose guide, like you said, for the strong friend to maneuver through life. So a lot of times we as women, try, we're trying to be superheroes for everybody else. And we can't even be mighty mouse to ourselves. Whoa, so um, listen, listen, live, learn, and moved on from it. So with this book, it is basically um, a 21-day guide teaching the strong friend how to still be a strong friend, but still maneuver through all of our own issues still dealing with us, looking in the mirror to see who we really are and being able to fix us as an individual before we go out and try to pour into other people. So it's not, it doesn't take anything away from the strong friend um, to recognize and acknowledge that we might be broken or we might not be taking care of ourselves. But the key to it is when we recognize that, that we need to fix that immediately because otherwise we're just pouring toxins into everyone that's around us and those that depend on us. That is so true. Now I have your first, uh, your first book, which is an ebook, The Power of Saying No. And and just from reading that and hearing what you're uh, describing about this book, it just feels like this is this a, a kind of like a spinoff where you go more in depth with kind of part of the Power of Saying No. Actually, it is. And everyone was so like, wait a minute, where is the rest of the power of saying no book? Because it's so short. Um, and one of my goals is to go back and do a longer version of the power of saying no. But the power of saying no is only a small portion of grinding grace. So um, you telling people no is only one aspect of an entire picture of what um, it takes to actually grow forward. So, um, yeah, I'm, it was just crazy. When I wrote that ebook. I just started typing. I'm like, listen, people are so afraid to tell people no. And we are, we are people pleasers by nature. Yes, we are. And the more that I tell you yes, the more that I deny myself. Mm-hmm. Well, at the end of the day, if your cup is full and mine is empty and you're still coming to me, then what value am I giving to you? Because my cup is empty. So people have to understand that there has to be a balance when people are asking you things, you know, asking things of you or um, ma- trying to make sure that they're pulling from you. You need to know that there needs to be a balance and you need not feel bad about it. <laughs> I used to feel bad about saying no. We feel now, bad like, no. we have to say no. Even to our kids. Like, oh, that hurts. Sentence. It's necessary. It's a full, it's a whole paragraph. Yeah. You know, you period. No, it's a full sentence. That is. And, and, and one of the, the uh, uh, three keys you, you pointed out in, in that book, The Power of Saying No, that 
that really uh, hit me was the first one. You said, get out of the way. Because yes. we, we, we be in people's way. Yes. We, you know, um, I had a coach one time and she says, do you think you're God? Mm. And I was like, why would I think I'm God? Mm -hmm. And she said, because you try to solve everybody's problems. She was like, if you don't know it, you go do the research to find out about it. And, uh -huh. you know, like you're trying to be everything for everyone. And I was like, no, I don't think I'm God. I just feel like if a person trusts me enough to depend on me, then I should be able to come through for them. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality of that is, is sometimes people are being taught a lesson and they're going through their own journey. Their own testimony is being written and we will get in the way of their testimony. And now we have interjected ourselves into their story when the story was really just for them and God. And so when she said that to me, I was like, well, who do I think I am? <laughs> you know? So um, we just have to realize that we can't save everybody. And when I say save, I mean rescue. We can't rescue everybody in their situation. Sometimes people have to go through some things are better appreciated when a person pays a price for it rather than it be given to them for free. Now, that's true. So, yeah. Now, the title of your new book, Grind. Now, these words stick. I know everyone is like caught up when they see grind and grace. Yes. Now, Jesus, you put grind and grace together. Now, I looked up the word grind and, um, the verb form used with an object means to wear, smooth, or sharpen by abrasion or friction. Yes, yes, yes. Now, the definition without it being with an object is to perform the operation of reducing to fine particles. Okay. <laughs> You know I need you to come through. Come on, break down first of all, grind. What, 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 where does grind come in? What, how did God give you grind in this title? So for grind, as an entrepreneur, um, the word grind happens, it just so happens that it's the, um, it's the trigger word. It's the, the trend word, right, for how we operate. But the thing is, is that people don't know that grind is real work. And as you were reading the definition, it is about doing something that produces um, a finer thing. Mm -hmm. And some people, when you say fine, you know, you were talking about breaking it up into smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. But when you say finer things, it can mean so much more because you can use it as an adjective to represent the value of a thing. So when when i think about how i grind mm -hmm. i look for my grind to produce the greatest value that i hold within me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world right so whatever is in me when i'm out here grinding that has to be the greatest thing that comes out of me mm -hmm. and so um it was just it, it it's just crazy um with this this whole title of grind and grace because i tried to separate the mm -hmm. grind and the grace but then i found out that my grind it's like it's intertwined you know it's intertwined like how can i produce something fine without having the grace on it so um yes you can't separate it you can i cannot they go hand in hand, hand, in hand. they hand, and people don't realize that businesses ceos and some of the most wealthiest people use biblical principles oh yes to get to where they are mm -hmm. so in an essence they're using their grind and grace mm -hmm. to build an empire so that is yes true. they're they're building uh empires they're, they're living uh, in their wealthy place because yes. they're operating in the principles of God's word, which is absolute. Yes. If you believe about God or Jesus Christ, if you operate the, the absolute principles in the book, it's going to produce. Yes. The word cannot come back without producing. Hmm. 
and said his word would not return unto mm -hmm. him void. You feel what I'm saying? Yes. So when it goes out, when it comes back, it's coming back greater than what it went out. Mm. The Bible says greater work shall we do. So mm -hmm. if that's the case, when I'm out here grinding, I need to be greater works. Yes. Shall we do? I got to take it up or not? Work the word, the word will work for you. Amen. 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 So, so we, we, we talked about grind. Now, now pull, pull grace on in there. Now, we know as uh, uh, Christian believers, we define grace as uh, unmerited, undeserving favor uh, that we receive from God. So tie in the grind and the grace. So when I think about my journey of, and I, I speak about the journey in the book, um, throughout certain parts of the book, I talk about my journey. Um, I realized that at my lowest points and not, not in writing the book because I went through this journey first before I tried to tell, it's like a broke person trying to teach someone how to gain wealth. You haven't mastered it yourself. Um, I had to master this journey first before it. I actually wrote a book about it. That's how it works. So, and going through that journey, I realized that at my lowest points, that it was all God. That it was, and I kept asking, why me? Why me? Like, how is it that, you know, when I'm thinking these thoughts of myself, that you can still give me favor? That even when my, my, my mind is going in circles, that you can still give me clarity. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm like, Lord, listen, because, you know, sometimes we argue, right? Sometimes we argue with God. I don't know how other people talk to him, but I be like, listen. You know, I, sometimes I be like, listen, Linda, like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like, <laughs> come on. Like, and he'd be like, no, I need you to do. I was like, wait a minute. Can we meet in the middle? Because, but even in those moments, mm -hmm. I still had unmerited favor. Mm -hmm. So throughout my journey um, from beginning up until now and being an entrepreneur um i've i've gained so much favor and and i'll say on the monetary side and on the wisdom side the favor like i look at favor as something as simple as the ability to be able to read something retain it and then apply it Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things that I've learned in entrepreneurship, it came from doing the research and then, you know, retaining it and then being able to apply it. So Grace, listen, there is nothing that I have done and accomplished in my life that was not by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. On the flip side of it, Grace is dignity. It's about being regal. And it goes back to um, when a person looks at me, the beauty that they see on the outside, I need to still be able to feel that for myself on the inside. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where that's where the grace mm -hmm. comes from. Yes, I, yes. When I, I was like, grinding grace comes through. Yes. 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 Okay, here's the biggie. Who is the strong friend? What, what do you mean when you say strong friend? When I say strong friend, I mean anyone that um, has, even if it's just one person mm -hmm. that depends on them, that calls them, um, that asks them for advice, mm -hmm. the person in the family that's expected to plan the family reunion or be the peacemaker when the siblings aren't talking, the friend that is tasked with uh, planning the best friend's birthday party. You, and it seems so simple and people are like, wait a minute, why would that be the strong friend? Because those people are the people that are trusted mm -hmm. with great responsibility, right? When you're talking about someone being a peacemaker or being a mediator in conflict between two people, that has to be, that person has to be trusted by both those people that they won't be biased, that they will give great advice. And that whatever that they're saying is all said in love, right? That's the strong friend, the person that's out here. And, and you know, you know, if you're the strong friend, if you start thinking, okay, I know I'm laying in my bed and I know I'm half asleep, 
but Sally just called me. Let me get up and see what's going on. That's how you know you're a strong, you're the strong friend. Strong friend. When you put yourself to the side to be able to make sure that another person is okay, you're the strong friend. No one ever has to tell you that you're the strong friend. The expectation that is put on you mm -hmm. describes you as being the strong friend. And some people will think, oh, I, that's not who I am. But it is who you are. Mm -hmm. Because as women, we carry the weight of the world right here on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so, and we're emotional. So we're, we're the people that walk by the homeless and we get it, start digging in our purses, mm -hmm. looking it. for some change because we can't stand to see people in need and us not try to help, right? Yeah. So in an essence, any woman that's looking in the mirror is the strong friend. Somebody's depending on you. Mm -hmm. And when you're pouring into other people, that's time that you're pouring out of yourself. And we just need to learn how to pour back into ourselves. And that's it. And, and from uh, what you're describing the strong friend um, to be, it's a calling. Yes. It's a calling. Yes. I never really looked at it like that, but it, 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 it is a calling. Um, God has equipped you to be the strong friend. Period. <laughs> now, I have a Period. question about the strong friend. What is one thing being a strong friend um, that can be harmful? To the strong friend, to that particular person who is the strong friend. Just give us at least one or two. That can be harmful. Uh -huh. That could work against you in being the strong friend. Pride. Mm. Pride. Um, and I'll, I'll speak, I'm very transparent. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the reason why I say pride is because I am one of, I'm a person that a lot of people depend on like people come to me um out of the blue and i'm like why did you why you chose me like <laughs> i like, i don't know why you chose me but um for, <laughs> for advice um for counseling and various things and when i was in need my pride would not allow me to seek the help that i needed or even if it was something simple, like I used to couldn't even ask my husband for money mm -hmm. because my pride would not let me like, wait a minute, I'm, the, I'm, I'm this strong, you know, independent person. I don't need anyone to do anything for me. Like I got this, you know, like even emotionally, I don't need to talk these feelings out. I got this. I'm the person that people come to, to talk, you know, their emotions out. So I'm good. And that was killing me. Mm. because when you recognize that you have an issue, you need to address that issue. Exactly. Period. It's and coming to the forefront to be dealt with. Exactly. <laughs> and sometimes we, that pride and ego will definitely make you feel like um, you don't have to, or you shouldn't have to depend on another person. Mm. But um, I found out like, not so like that 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 was definitely um very detrimental to me because the more that i did not seek help the darker it got for me mm. so um okay. definitely pride um another thing that is not good um as we are maneuvering through life um that that self-worth mm -hmm. is something that we have to really, really um, look out for. And the reason why I say look out for it, because some people have an inflated sense of self-worth and they allow the expectations of others and how others depend on them mm -hmm. to determine their worth that strong friend isn't determining their worth on their own based on the value that they provide. Mm. They're basing it on how many people need me oh, or what I've solved and resolved yeah. for other people. 
but you can't base your value and your worth on how other people perceive you. It has to be, I'm standing confident in who I am, what I offer, and period. That's, that's, that's what I am. That's what I'm giving to you. Now, whether you receive it or not, that's on you. But my value and my worth is not calculated and it's not um, determined upon how much people need me. Because what happens when you're, in, you're that type of person and no one no longer needs you. Come on. Come on. You just you just around here walking around looking crazy. You losing your mind because now you feel like you're worth nothing. Yes. Because the people who you've poured into, your pouring was not mm -hmm. in vain. You pouring into them actually helped them grow and mature to the point now where they no longer need you. Mm. and that's a bad place to be in when you always need people to need you because now you're looking for projects instead of trying to uh -huh. hear from God about who it is people that you should people. be out here helping and that goes back to getting out of the way because yes. otherwise you, you will find yourself in situations that you were never supposed to be a part of that's true so yeah that's true Mm, I can't wait to get my book. <laughs> wow. That's, that, that's, that's true. That's some good stuff right there. Whew. So, we hear it said, and you already mentioned that our, our misery is our ministry. Our, our mess is our message. And as yes. you have already stated uh, that the first book and then this, this, um, this work, uh, Grace and Grand as well, is birthed from uh, from your ministry, from a place of hurt, a, a place of pain. You've grown, you've developed, you've overcome. And so now you're at a place. Like you were just talking about when a person needs someone to need them mm -hmm. and they're no longer needed. Now they, they don't have their self-worth. They don't know who they are. So God has made you come to a place you've developed and, and grown to a place where you know who you are, you know who you are, you love self, you're yes. confident in who you are, you're not needy, you're still the strong friend. Yes. You I'm are a the healthy strong, strong friend. friend. You're healthy. There you go. You're I'm a healthy, healthy strong, strong friend. friend. So yes. once you fulfill the need and help others, when they're at a place where they need to be, when you've accomplished all of that you needed to in their life, and they no longer need you, you're still who you were. You it's were just there. like a person who is used to drama in their life, right? Mm, come on. Mm -hmm. That's why until a person learns their worth and their value, whether it be man or woman, because mm -hmm. some men are in crazy relationships with women, it'll end up being an addiction to where they're addicted to drama. They're addicted to the mm -hmm. chaos. So when they find someone, you know, as a man, when he finds, you know, his good thing or mm -hmm. when the woman is found, mm -hmm. it is so unnatural to them. Mm -hmm. They reject Come the on. good stuff. And mm -hmm. soon they will reject the good stuff for the drama and the chaos to come back because that's where they're comfortable at. Yes. And, and that's, that's what they're you used know, to. Been in it, so exactly. That's all they know. That's, and we don't like leaving our little comfort zone. Listen. And, and, I, <laughs> and, 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 it, and it's crazy. It's crazy. It's but true. It's just like the battered woman syndrome. They call it the battered woman syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, when people need um, people to need them it's an addiction mm. and we, we all know that people who are addicted to drugs people who are addicted to alcohol it isn't the drugs and the alcohol that's the issue mm -mm. it's what is on the inside of you that's the issue that causes you to be addicted to these things yep so when all those when you are no longer needed you have to deal with what's on the inside of you and, yes. and that's why people are so busy up they're not quiet yes. with themselves. 
You have that too, where you're so busy, you're always doing, mm-hmm. going, doing, you just can't settle down. Because if you get quiet with yourself, you yes. can't deal with yourself. Yes. Live in your reality. Yes. Uh-huh. That is correct. Ooh, are you a counselor? No, I'm not a licensed <laughs> clinical social worker. No, ma'am, I'm not. Oh. I am an empowerment speaker who is focused on personal development. Yes. Um, and it's no crazy because yes. people will ask me, am I a counselor? Mm. Um, I counsel married couples and people who are tr- um, aspiring to be married or engaged. Yeah. But um, one thing about counseling, I think we all are counselors, right? On yeah. a serious note, we all are counselors, mm-hmm. counselors because we're counseling people to be a better them today than they were That's yesterday. It. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We all counselors. This is awesome. <laughs> okay. So, Ms. Mencia, I want you right now to, no, I'll do this. I'll do that last. Let's do, okay. let's, let's flip it. So, fun fact. Fun okay. Fact. Okay. Um, tell us one thing about you that we probably don't know. Oh, goodness. <laughs> one thing about me that people probably don't know. Mm. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, you like, which one do I tell? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> the one that people don't think I'm the craziest um I don't like my food to touch when I eat what Mm -mm. and I eat my food one one thing at a time so if I have three vegetables and a meat Uh I will eat my vegetables first and eat my meat last so it's like eat the sides first and Uh then eat the main course yes and I do not no touchy feeling no at barbecues i have like three and four plates and it's not <gasps> greedy it's because i don't want my food to touch wow now the family should know by not get to divide the plates but <laughs> well you know my family know you- knows they, they know, know. And, and and my daughter when she uh she'll make some eggs she'll make breakfast sometimes <laughs> and she knows like mm-hmm. no touchy touchy the only thing that I will mix is I will mix grits and eggs. Now that's um, good right there. Yes, I'll mix I'll grits that. and eggs. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, tacos, I eat tacos. But like, well, yeah. but tacos go together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, people will mix stuff. Like, we were at breakfast this morning and they got like the skillet, the breakfast skillet where it had oh, I love eggs. Skillet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 eggs, the onions, the potatoes. <laughs> The meat. Nope. Nope. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Nope. I, I wouldn't have thought that though. <laughs> okay. I do not. Um tell us your favorite Michael Jackson song. Oh goodness. First one that comes to your mind. I know you probably is that's <laughs> Beat it was the first song that came to my mind. But, <laughs> but that's probably like, not your favorite. No, but I like Dirty Diana. I heard that the other day. I love Dirty Diana. Okay. I do. I, I do. Okay. All of the, the We Are the World, no. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. I, like, I like the songs that make you dance. Yeah, too. Yeah. It's, it's, it's okay. Songs are fun, you know. Right. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna go back to the other side. We're gonna flip that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna end on this note. Um, I want you to speak right now to that woman, that man, that um, identifying now with some of the things that you have touched on uh, as it relates to the strong friend, um, needing to say no. And we said so many other things that I, I'm so sure that resonated uh, with the listeners on today. I just want you to just speak to that person right now who's listening. All right. 
your journey is yours. You have to be in control of your life. The more that you pour dirt into water, you're only making it dirtier. So you have identified now that you're the strong friend and that there are people that are depending on you, that you are the strong pillar for um, people, whether it be one person or a group of people. So now you need to do the work on yourself to stop pouring dirt into clean water because that's what we're doing when we are so full of everything else. We're so full of uh, depression, sadness, low self-esteem, rejection. We're suffering from these things. And now it's starting to turn us dark on the inside. So that's what now we're pouring into other people. So it's okay to be the strong friend. It's actually quite an honor to be the strong friend. But you need to want to be the healthy strong friend. And it's all about doing the work on you before you can go and tell another person anything about how they should maneuver through their life, you need to clean your own life up. You need to make sure that when people come to you, um, that you're giving them authenticity, that you're giving them clarity. And the only way you can give those things is if they're already within you. So, it's all great. Now that we know you're the strong friend, we're rooting for you. And one of the things that I actually say in the beginning of the book um, for the dedication, mm -hmm. it says, this book is dedicated to every strong woman who put herself on the back burner to be a superhero for everyone else. No one saw you hurting, but I see you. And I'm here to help you heal and be great. Wow. Awesome. You guys make sure you purchase that book. Grind and Grace, a 21 day of purpose. It's a guide for the strong friend. Yes. Yes. So again, tell us about the uh the book launch and the book signing this weekend and all the yes. I am so excited. So yes, um I'm having this book launch party on Sunday. Um, June 9th at 4 p.m. and it's at the C-Suite and that's at 2704 North Laramie in Chicago. Um, we'll have refreshments. We're going to have a great time. I'm going to sign everybody's book and I have some um, some very revealing things that I'm going to um, express about this book and just to people. It's, it's very... Um, it'll be the first time that anyone has heard it publicly. So I want to give people that part of my testimony and it's going to be an intimate setting. So I'm very, very excited about this and being able to share more of my journey with people because some people write books just to say they've written a book, but you know, we, we out here write books to try to help people. Like, so, um, I'm definitely excited about it. But yes, Sunday, June 9th, 4 p.m. at the C-Suite, 2704 North Laramie in Chicago. And I'm like, yay. Yes. I'm so happy so for excited. you. Okay, I have my last request of you. Okay, okay. Uh, and I forgot to pray us in, but God was with us. Um, if you could just pray us out. And Absolutely. Um, Again, thank you for joining us on this week's Motivation Podcast. This has been a blessing. I can't wait for the uh, replay. I'm going to listen to it over and over and over. <laughs> Look, me too. I'm downloading this one. Because you was dropping gems. You was dropping gems. I'm listening to this. So make sure you subscribe, you share, uh, and get the word out. Um so they can receive this this word on today and also support uh, my sister, Mrs. Lincia L. Marshall. All right. So go ahead, sis, pray us out. Father God, we come to you, oh God, saying thank you, Father. Thank you for all of the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, oh God. 
Thank you, oh God, for being the great I am. Thank you, oh God, for being Jehovah Jireh, oh God. Thank you for being Jehovah Nisi, Father God. Thank you for having clarity in our minds, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for having the activities of our limbs, oh God. Father God, we thank you just for waking us up this morning, oh God, because you didn't have to do it, oh God, but you did. And right now we give reverence and honor to you, Father God. Reverence and honor because you are everything in our lives, oh God. We eat, we sleep, we are the all because of you, Father God. And we give you honor and reverence for that, Father God. And we ask, oh God, right now that you touch the heart of everyone that is hearing this prayer right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Mend their hearts where they are broken, oh God. Heal them, oh God, where uh, they experience heartbreak, oh God. The heart that is blackened, oh God, soften it right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, the minds, oh God, those that are listening, oh God, heal their minds, oh God, from thoughts that are not your thoughts, oh God. The thoughts that they have for themselves, oh God. For we know that the thoughts and the plans that you have for us is for us to prosper, oh God. And if any thought in our minds, oh God, contradicts that, oh God, we send it right now back to the pit of hell, oh God. Oh God, purify us, oh God. Purify us, oh God, so that we see us as you see us, oh God. That we love us, oh God, how you love us, oh God. And not just loving ourselves, oh God, but loving our neighbor, oh God. Loving our sisters and our brothers, Father God. And I just declare and decree, oh God, that everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God, shall receive deliverance, Father God. And whatever area they need deliverance in, I'm declaring and decreeing, oh God, whether it be a financial deliverance, oh God, whether it be a natural deliverance, oh God. Oh God, I'm declaring and decreeing promotions, oh God, in the atmosphere, oh God. Mm -hmm. Not just promotions on jobs, oh God, but promotions in life, Father God. Mm -hmm. Promoting the single to the married, oh God. Promer uh, promoting the broken, oh God, to the healed. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. we declare it to be so, Father God. And Father God, bless Mona, oh God, for even even being able uh, to to having the desire, oh God, to come and, and interview people and to have this conversation and to uh, promote other people's business, oh God. Bless her, oh God. Bless her, Father God, because she's looking out for others before she even looks out for herself, Father God. Oh God, give her a double portion of your blessing and your favor, Father God, just because her heart is pure, Father God. Oh God, we just thank you because we know that it shall be done, oh God. And even now, oh God, let everything that Mona and I touch be blessed, Father God. Everything that we write, oh God, for your people, oh God, let it be a blessing, oh God. Let it change lives, oh God. Let it go international. Let it be the highways and the byways that compel men to Christ, oh God. Let it, us not have to stand in the pulpit to cause men and women to be saved, oh God. But let the words that are written on the pages, let the words that are coming out of our mouth in everyday experiences draw people to Christ. We thank you, we bless you, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, thank you, hallelujah, glory yes, to God. God. Yes, God, yes, God. Thank you, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Oh, this was awesome, let me uh, stop the recording.